In this video, I'm going to make this number five billiard ball into a lighted jack-o'-lantern. So I'm tapping the hole with a quarter twenty tap. And I go in about an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter. And interesting, I see that my ball changed its orientation before I could drill it, so it's off a little bit, but it'll be fine. It kind of adds to the interest of the piece, I think. Phenolic resin dust is nasty stuff, and I always protect my lungs. I'm running the uh, lathe at about a thousand RPM and if I hold the tool just so I can get a sort of cut. Now to get the tool marks out with wet sanding and I start off with about a 220 grit and I work my way up to around 2400 in the micro mesh uh, set. And so I've essentially uh, flattened the bottom of the ball at this point. And here is one of my trade secrets. So I created this uh, ball holding jig here. And it's just two pieces of uh, wood that are sandwiched together with a hole. Just to show you what this looks like, it's just a face plate and I've got a, a piece of wood on here and I drilled some holes for the screws and made a, a top plate for it. So these, uh, have about, I leave about a quarter inch gap all around and then this plate pushes the ball and secures it into a position here. And I can use the hole that I made to kind of position it to make sure it's centered before I turn it. I like to have a clean hole about two thirds of the way through the ball and this gives me a place to insert my spindle gouge. Uh, which I use to hollow the ball. And I like to use a round nose scraper to kind of smooth out the inside of the ball and get those tool marks out from the spindle gouge. Yeah, we'll just undo the screws here and see what we got. Big reveal. All right, so there's our basic shape. That's going to be the canvas for our carving that we're going to do next. A uh, Sharpie pen gives me some nice guidelines for carving out a spooky face. Uh, I'll cut some ridges around the circumference of this. I usually do about five of these and uh, this will just kind of give me a little visual cue on where to cut. These little diamond burrs work well on the phenolic and so I'll use that to uh, do the carving uh, for the face. Here I'm just uh, wallowing out the eye holes. As I mentioned before, the dust is a bit of an issue with this phenolic, so the fan there has a filter on it and it's drawing pretty much all the dust into it. But having said that, I am wearing a dust mask as I do this work. I've dipped it in water to get the dust off of it and uh, so it looks real good but in fact it's very rough here uh, in these areas so I'm going to wet sand this. I'm 
All right, so about 30 minutes into uh, wet sanding, maybe less, 25 minutes. There's still some scores and scuffs on here, but they're really not too bad. Uh, it looks really good. The face looks really good on this. So, time for paint. But the yellow is fussy stuff to work with. So I'm just using some acrylic here, white. I'll put that down first. And the yellow on the white uh, will look a lot brighter and nicer uh, than just putting the yellow onto the orange. The yellow, you'd have to put several coats of it. And I'll probably have to put a couple coats of it on anyway. But when you start trying to coat a dark color like this, this orange here, uh, it really gets, uh, gets to be a challenge. And so when I'm done with this, if I have a little bit of a uh, slop, if you will, you just wet sand it off, comes right off. And I ended up putting two coats of the white paint on there to act as sort of a primer. And uh, so now I can go in here with the yellow. And when it's laying on the white, it should pop pretty good. And we'll do the eyes. It's pretty easy to do. Just slop it around in there. All right, we've got a couple of coats of the yellow in there, and so we'll let that dry. And a couple more steps, and this thing is done. What I do is I just put a little bit of this uh, Min Wax finishing paste wax. Great stuff. And uh, just kind of stick it down in there, and it kind of gets in all those little scratches, and it sort of helps to hide them. And then use my little car polisher here and this thing works really dandy on these uh, phenolic balls here. What do you think? Not bad. Picked up a whole bunch of these little tea lights inexpensively at a yard sale. I think I got like 20 of them for a dollar. And so a friend of mine came over and uh, he had this idea. He says, well, why don't we take the guts out of a couple of these and uh, make a couple of light bulbs and you can put those in the pumpkin's eyes. And I thought, boy, that's a great idea. So he set about uh, taking a couple of those things apart and uh, we uh, messed around and got them to work, put two of the light bulbs in parallel on the same battery and it still works just fine. So after a little bit of fumbling off camera, I got, got them in there. You can see the little circuit down inside there. And uh, the lights, it's kind of neat. They flicker just like a candle. So that's, that's the way these things are. I'm sure you probably see these in restaurants and whatnot. Uh, but that looks pretty cool. And then the last thing is I uh, made a cap off camera. And uh, that's kind of a separate thing. It's, it's a wood turning project to make these. This is an iron wood that I used. And it's like turning a little finial. And so it's a nice fitted lid. So, there is our billiard ball jack-o'-lantern. I sure hope you enjoyed this video. You know what to do. Like, subscribe, etc. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Thank you.